favorite, as Jim and Mark Spitz called the race. Back at the Olympic pool and ready now for the marathon of swimming. The men's 1500 meter freestyle final. The world and Olympic records in the event held by the man who is not here. Vladimir Salnikov of the Soviet Union, one of the three greatest male swimmers in the world and perhaps the most lamentable individual absence occasioned by the Eastern Bloc boycott. The favorite in this event is an American, George DiCarlo, 21 years old from Denver, Colorado already a gold medalist here in the 400 meter freestyle race he will be swimming in lane six if you think back to eight years ago in montreal you may remember the scintillating three-man duel between brian goodell and bobby hackett of the united states and steve holland of australia eventually won by goodell in a time which was then a world record and stood as an american record for eight years the carlo broke that american record at the olympic trials one month ago the rest of the field Wayne Shillington of Australia in lane one, Reiner Henkel of West Germany in lane two, in lane three, Stefano Grandi of Italy, lane four, 18-year-old Mike O'Brien of Costa Mesa, California, number five on the all-time list behind Solnikov, DiCarlo, Goodell, and Bobby Hackett, and he has led qualifying for this event. Lane five, Stefan Pfeiffer of West Germany, probably the most rapidly improving distance swimmer in the world. Lane six, DiCarlo, lane seven, David Schilt, and lane eight, Frank Iacono of France, Shields in lane seven, is from Canada. They will swim 30 lengths of the pool. And the key, Mark Spitz, is to keep a clock in your head and to know exactly how fast you are going and what you are doing with your physical potential all the way. Most of these athletes have had a chance to swim this event many, many times before, needless to say. And they know their pace. They know exactly what they have to do. And they've concentrated on that even in workout by doing tremendous amount of repeats over and over again. And therefore, they know that this 50 feels like it's a 30 second. This one feels like it's a 30.5. And you can actually feel that pace so accurately that there are times when you finish a race, even after 15 minutes, you know within about a half a second after being in the water for 15 minutes exactly your time. As they come down to the wall at the 100 meter mark, the two Americans. O'Brien and DiCarlo have established the lead. And along with them, Frank Iacono of France down in lane eight. You might as well call it, to all intents and purposes, the three Americans, because while Iacono is from France, he is a product of the Mission Viejo Swim Club and trains with Mike O'Brien, who also trains at Mission Viejo. Now, as they go down to the wall at 150 meters, O'Brien has a slight lead. DiCarlo will try to swim a measured pace throughout building rapidly from 100 meters to 100 meters to maximize his potential in the latter part of the race. Most of these swimmers will settle down after the first 400 meters, Jim, and that's after eight laps of the pool. Keep in mind, they'll be swimming 30 laps of the pool, and they'll work on their pace from about 400 to 1,300 meters, and then with about four to five laps to go, 200 to 250 meters to go, they'll start a sprint, or whatever is left in their body to sprint, that is, and most of these athletes will be able to actually improve their pace times in the last couple of meters. As they touch at the 200 meter mark, they are just a little bit behind Vladimir Solnikov's world record pace, but they are often swimming in the marathon of swimming, the men's 1500 meters, and after 200 meters, the leaders are the two Americans, Mike O'Brien and George DiCarlo. We'll return here later for the conclusion of the 1500 meter freestyle. Welcome to the Open Home Collection. The warmth of wood, a cozy nook, the color and style of homes you look. Coordinated home fashions with an American country look. That's Open Home at Sears. Beautiful shades, a comfy chair, friendly rooms with special flair. Come see all these open home designer ideas for your living and dining room. Bedroom and bath at Sears. There's more for your life with open home. At Sears. During the 1984 Olympic Games, Earth Grains will be the bread in every athlete's lunchbox every day. And the best of all nations, great bread will be there. Now you can compete in the Olympics too. There's 
play McDonald's, when the U.S. wins, you win Olympic Games and win up to $10,000 instantly. Or keep your cards, and when the U.S. wins your event, you win a Big Mac, regular fries, or a Coca-Cola. So go to McDonald's and get your game cards today, because when the U.S. wins, you win. My kids is dead! The Great American Railroads. They were built to cut coast-to-coast -coast travel from five months to one week and open up the West. That pioneer spirit made this country grow. Today, I see that same spirit and energy in hundreds of small to mid-sized companies whose new ideas, new jobs, and new technologies will continue to build America. At First Jersey Securities, we specialize in discovering these emerging growth companies for today's investors with vision. First Jersey Securities, come grow with us. We bring you back to the Olympic pool and the 1500 meter freestyle final. Just a little bit more now than 300 meters to go. And we've got a three man battle. It is still Mike O'Brien of the United States in the lead. He is there on the right of your screen in lane four. In lane six, George DiCarlo now turns in second place. He is the other American. Frank Iacono of France, whom you saw earlier in lane eight among the leaders, has dropped out. But the man who is now pressuring O'Brien and DiCarlo is in lane five, Stefan Pfeiffer of Hamburg, West Germany, 18 years old, I told you before, probably the most rapidly improving distance swimmer in the world, and he has been applying the pressure, Mark Spitz, over about the last 400 meters. They turn now with 250 meters to go, and if Mike O'Brien can hold on, he is going to spring a very significant upset in the pool in which he will be swimming for the University of Southern California Trojans starting this fall. I just noticed that George DiCarlo swimming below uh, Michael Bryan. He's swimming in lane number six. Started to make a move right now. I can see that his arms are starting to rotate a little bit faster. He's starting to kick in and out of the turns. He uses a two-beat kick, as all of these swimmers do. That's two beats for every complete left and right arm rotation of the stroke. And a man that's been sitting in the shotgun position, which is this Stefan Pfeiffer from the Federal Republic of Germany, it's been like swimming in a formation like airplanes do. He has, with his goggles on, always the sight of DiCarlo's swimsuit, and he's moved right up now. He's within a body length. DiCarlo and Pfeiffer have now moved within two body lengths of O'Brien. Now, O'Brien certainly has a very comfortable margin if he can keep the pace moving, but DiCarlo is known for fast finishes, and he's looking very much at uh, DiCarlo, that is, he's looking very much at Mike O'Brien. He's got him in view, and uh, it's going to be anybody's race here. I wouldn't count out DiCarlo or Stefan Pfeiffer, and it's as close as 1,500 meters I've seen in a long time in Olympic competition, Jim. Well, of course, the closest one was in 76 between Goodell and Hackett and Steve Holland. They all finished within three seconds of one another. Right now, Mike O'Brien, with just a little over 100 meters to go, has what looks like a pretty comfortable working margin. He's six feet, six inches tall, weighs only 151 pounds, trains at Mission Viejo, California. A gold medal here would be the seventh of the games for Mission Viejo swimmers, and he swims a total of 22,000 meters a day in training at Mission Viejo, so he is as prepared for the distance of this event as any swimmer in the world could be. Right now, with less than 100 meters to go, Mike O'Brien is lengthening his lead and heading for a gold medal. I don't think they're going to get the American record of DiCarlo's time of 15.01.51. That would mean that he would have to come back in something close to 54 or 55 seconds, and I don't think that's a possibility. Maybe in the 58s, but I think it'll be a personal best by Mike O'Brien. And it goes to be said that there may be some validness to swimming a lot of yardage to be a distance man. O'Brien does 22,000 meters. DiCarlo has only been swimming 14,000 meters. And I think this is one of the reasons that O'Brien now has been able to hold this pace over DiCarlo. Vindication for Mission Viejo coach Mark Schubert, who was criticized by some at the Olympic trials. Mike O'Brien comes down to the wall. He will touch in a time well off the world and Olympic record, but a great time for Mike O'Brien. 1505.20. DiCarlo adds silver in the 1500 meters to the gold he won in the 400 meter race. And Stefan Pfeiffer of West Germany will get the bronze as that nation continues to get an outstanding team performance out of its swimmers. But a remarkably controlled, carefully paced race by Mike O'Brien has given him an unexpected gold medal as he gets congratulations from Pfeiffer. We should say that that time, 11 seconds over Vladimir Solnikov's world record, leads you to believe, and you must say in all honesty, that Solnikov, were he here, would have won this race. 
I think that goes without saying. But Mike O'Brien and Stefan Pfeiffer had personal best times, and that's a good race. All right. So there they are, gold and silver for the U.S.